We just wrapped our weekend in class, and I have some amazing art to show you. I want to introduce you to a friend of mine. Go ahead and look right over here. Nick, give us your information, and well, we can get in touch with you as well. Sure. I'm Nick Walters. You can find me on Instagram at Nick underscore Walters. Pretty simple. That's where I have a majority of my portfolio work, if you care to see anything more. That's wonderful. And Nick is a fantastic sculptor. I'm so happy to have him here. Uh, Nick, I want to start by showing everybody where you started with this. Uh, do you have some references, some of the initial references? Yeah, I sure do. Um, this was one of my major references, is a, uh, an image that I found online of a character from Masters of the Universe. Yeah. And this is a, a fan art where it's got a little bit more realism than the original character had. But this is what I wanted to emulate from my sculpture today. Wonderful. Looking back at some of the other references, uh, to see how the original character looked. Now this is what you showed me when you got here and I instantly was like, oh great! Yeah. There's such a, a fan base and such a following uh, for for this Masters of the Universe and we had, a, in my class, we had a guy who did Trap Jaw recently. But I love that this is your telling. This is your interpretation. It's retro Talk and it's modern. It's, it's the kinds of things that I like in my own aesthetic. Right. That, the bright, bold colors, but it's things that you remember from your childhood, but with a, a more modern interpretation. I love, I, I love it. You can really pull out um, all the detail. It has hair work. It has some flesh work. And, uh, I really enjoyed working on it. I love it. Well, I can see the point of the ears. The point of the ears are, are the, in, that, in that photo from the foundation, from the original reference. And of course, you went much more into a realistic thing. I gotta point out what I love. This compression that you got in here, my gosh, that sells it for me. Uh, how many years have I spent, how many years have we all spent looking in the mirror and referencing ourselves mm -hmm. to be able to get dynamic sculpture? What's really banging for me in this, and I mean that, is the compression here is so fantastic. It just gives us that anger. Mm -hmm. Also, the eye treatment is fantastic. You can feel the bunch up there. Uh, if you yeah, look at right me around. for a second, you get that fat bunch up in there, you've got that. So you've got those things working. This hair work, this just came on today. Talk to us a little bit about that. I maybe spent 10 minutes with Nick, not long at all. We had a little bit of theory and discussion on hair, but I want you to talk about bringing in the hair. Sure, that was one of the major things I wanted to work on in this class. I've attempted hair in the past on other sculptures and I wasn't really happy with how it was coming along whether that was due to realism or I just didn't like the shape of it. Right. Um, so even that short 10 minutes just gave me the cues of how I needed to lay it in yes. and then how I can come back and make it a little bit more refined. And mm -hmm. it's I think, very successful on this. I'm very happy with how it's come along. And yeah. it, it came up so quickly, but it just, it clicked for me. Once you showed me, it was it was simple, but it made sense. Yes. And yes. it's what my character needed. And I was happy that it, it came along like that. Well, now, now tell us this. Um, of course, you're gonna take this home uh, just uh, the just because the class ends doesn't mean that the sculpture is going to end. You're going to continue this and finish it, the detail and call the sculpture when you're ready. But tell us this: is there a hair treatment coming up here? What I'm seeing in this character is it, it, it could either be a flesh tone in this cream area, or okay. it could be uh, some hair, like a fuzz, like a peach fuzz kind of fur. Right. And I think it makes more sense that it would be a peach fuzz kind of fur, because uh, you can get this light texture in it. I tried, I started, right. and I would like to in, go in and make that a little bit more elaborate, Explore and that. really punch that in, and I would take that throughout the, the cheeks and the nose and then the cranium here, and I think that that would bring a lot to the character. It would be fun practice for me as well. Absolutely, absolutely. Well, I have to compliment you also. Uh, one of the reasons why this has such life in this hair is you'll notice shapes traveling one direction and favoring one direction. Then you'll notice other shapes fighting it and going back the other direction. This is some of what we were talking about, but he really got it. The hair has to be styled as much as it can be coming off of the tool. If you just did a bunch of dead straight lines, it takes no imagination to imagine this could crash. So once again, Nick's real strong point here is to understand the concept, but also to keep it alive, keep it moving. Fantastic. Uh, talk to us a little bit about the teeth. Uh, I didn't do anything with you on the teeth. Talk to us about getting the teeth. Yeah, that was another point that I was excited about. I wanted the character to, to look angry. And uh, at first I left it just open and I wanted to get that mouth shape right. I wanted to have space to put the teeth because I, I wanted to have a top and a bottom, not just a, a closed mouth, but an open mouth. Um, so I built it up enough that I could make it have that depth, um, but then also look like it was opening up in some kind of a ferocious way. And uh, when I 
first sculpted it in, I thought it was looking a little too smiley. And so I darkened up that uh, shadow deep inside of here in the eyes and, yes. and over-exaggerated those lines. And, and now it looks like he's uh, got a lot of fierceness to his mouth. And uh, I was really happy with this, how it came along. Absolutely. Well, once again, cherry on the cake for me. You know, we study our heroes. And uh, uh, for example, Art Sakamoto, who worked with Rick Baker for many, many years, he had a certain style in doing teeth. How you vault the teeth and the attitude and the anatomy of the teeth really can bring so much power through subtlety, through subtlety. It's the difference between, say, for example, a chiclet and something that really is like a raptor claw. Mm. Uh, sometimes in my canines, I'll put a leading edge on the front, and that will give me a very threatening tooth. But once again, uh, I love this. i got to point out something because uh, 20 years ago on 13 Ghosts, it came to me, rotted teeth. I had looked at an old actor. And I looked at his bottom teeth and they were worn down. Yeah. And so when Nick did this, uh, I just laughed because it's something that you do to add a little storytelling and give history. I gotta put my glasses on. So do you see the, the lower teeth here? Do you see how he shoveled out uh, the top of the tooth? That's history, that's existence. He's worn down his teeth. And so in the paint job, as he has maybe a yellowed tooth, down there in the core, as if you're looking into a tree trunk, for example, instead of seeing circular striations, you see perhaps a brown stain or what go. have you, and that speaks of history. I doubt he's got great hygiene. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I agree, but uh, well, just a powerful piece. Thank you. And I appreciate that he also came in here. Um, tell us about uh, what was perhaps a little difficult or bothersome. You tell us about what was good. Uh, did you find a tool or anything in here that was maybe new for you? Mm. That Something that blew my mind was using these rubber tools. Now, I've had rubber tools in the past, but they've been small and maybe a little bit more firm. Right. But using some of these larger tip, softer rubber tools uh, really helped me to get these shapes a little bit quicker, right. and it's a little bit more polished for me. Yes. So getting the shapes in the eyes, getting these creases around uh, the eye shapes, yes. um, getting in the, these areas around the nose, and getting that compression, um, it just came so much quicker for me. Yeah, and that's something yeah. that I had been struggling with is yeah. I'll noodle, I'll add something in, I'll take it away. Right. Add it and take it away until I'm happy with it. Right. But with this, you can just go in and just, Grab it makes it. that line quick and clean and uh, it's gonna be a time saver for me for machines sure. It. Machines Absolutely. it, machines it. I'd be lost without it for my own personal work. It's just a wonderful way to get some organics, uh, soft, clean. Uh, it used to be everybody that we would uh, cut a line and trench the line, not so much anymore now that we have these wonderful yeah. clay shapers and wonderful tools. Look those up online. Well, my friend, listen, I could sit here and talk to you all day about this. Absolute pleasure. So much. Now he's gonna take this home, everybody, and he's gonna finish his hair work up top. He's gonna do his uh, fine, perhaps, lattice of hair that travels all over it, maybe the thickness of like cat hair on a cat nose. Whatever you do, we want you to post, and we, uh, well, I'm so happy to have had you here. This is a, a weekend class. Look how much you got done. I'm happy with the progress and it's, it's been great and it's a lot down to the the techniques and learning yes. how to improve yes. on that speed and well, I'm looking forward to molding it painting it and having some some variations and just a wonderful gift for the fans of He-Man mm -hmm. and the masters of the universe yeah yeah Beast Man's a great character <laughs> all right oh, we're gonna take off thank you so much for uh, coming in and spending just a few moments with us and we'll see you next time